Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar where we do have a wall of rain pushing in from the north and the west at the moment giving a widespread soaking our first real widespread soaking of the autumn so far where pretty much all of the British Isles are going to be seeing some heavy rain at some point today. We'll have a look at the weather warnings as we do have a yellow rain and wind warning in force for parts of Scotland where we feel the heaviest rain and the gustiest winds. And then we'll have a look at the UK V, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. As temperatures are going to be very much up and down, but so is precipitation. It looks likely we'll see some dry patches over the next five days, but we'll also see more of these heavy bands of precipitation pushing in from the west as we do have a flat westerly really at the moment high pressure is trying to ridge up and we'll see that from the gfs gm eastern wf and the ensembles towards the second half of the video but the continued trend is for a westerly wind just to continue to push through with a lot of areas of lower pressure churning away out in the north atlantic potentially uh, impacting us Again, the intensity of these lows and where the precipitation is, the strongest winds, all depends on the position of the jet stream and how much these lows do develop. Um, and that is something we can't really say. But the general theme at the moment is for this continued westerly trend. And I wouldn't be surprised to see more of these sort of walls of rain uh, washout days over the next couple of weeks. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So, as I said, if we start on the live radar, you can see there's some very heavy rain pushing in from the west. Um, some areas, some recording this around midday, East Midlands, East Anglia, down to central southern England are about uh, are without the very heavy rain at the moment. Some patchy rain moving in, but soon these areas will be met by this wall of rain. And you can see it is incredibly heavy across parts of Scotland at the moment, parts of northern England, Wales as well. Of course, heading over the higher ground, we're always going to get higher precipitation because of the orographics, um, but uh, elsewhere it is still incredibly heavy and wouldn't be surprised to be seeing around 10 millimetres of rain dropping for most areas, maybe 30, 40, 50 millimetres over the higher ground, potentially in a few spots, but the rain is going to continue over the next few days, so if you don't see that much rain from this as it moves through, you will probably see more rain over the coming days. If you do put on those temperatures, uh, as of around midday, as I said, you can see further westwards under that precipitation band, it is pretty miserable temperatures, struggling into the low teens, most likely 10 to 12 degrees. We're escaping it in the east, maybe 12, 13, 14, but again, nothing too exceptional. It's all still feeling pretty chilly out there, and those temperatures will be dropping over the course of the afternoon as the precipitation does move in. If you go over to the weather warning, you can see we've got a yellow wind and rain warning. Yellow rain warning across parts of western Scotland, pushing into central Scotland as well, from 8am today until 2pm today as well. Look at the further details, an area of heavy rain will spread from the west morning, uh, from the west Friday morning. Accumulations of 20 to 30 millimetres are likely in a few hours, with a chance of up to 40 millimetres in one or two places. Chiefly across higher parts, uh, and southerly winds will touch gale force at times, with fallen leaves adding to the risk of flooding and potential travel disruption. The rain is expected to clear to showers early to mid-afternoon, high likelihood lower end of the impact matrix. If you look at the wind warning, again, this is from 8am today until 3pm today. Uh, again, you may be seeing the video outside of these uh, weather warning zones, but they can still, uh, so we can still see the impact from this. We can still see the very gusty winds, we can still see the very heavy rain, so do make sure you do take caution out there. It's about a very windy weather, is expected to affect the west, uh, western and northern isles of Scotland on Friday. Deep air of low pressure to the far north and northwest of Scotland will push active weather fronts across the UK on Friday, bringing strong winds to the western, uh, then northern isles of Scotland. The strongest winds are likely to be southerlies ahead of the front with a gust of 65 to 70 miles per hour in coastal parts and perhaps 75 miles per hour across the northern isles. Again, high likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix. And as I said, uh, videos earlier this week into last weekend we could have seen a named storm from this see we can see we got the yellow warnings but across northern scotland because the center of the low is hanging out more towards iceland out into the north atlantic and that's why this is not a named storm if it had shifted further southwards um then we could have seen these uh weather warnings further southwards with named storm impacts there as well so it is um potential uh there over the next couple of weeks i've seen these severe lows but you can see today the low pressure systems are way too far to our north really to give us uh, any severe storm impacts but still they're very heavy rain and 
at least some yellow warning uh, justified stronger winds across parts of Scotland. Now, if we do go over to the UK V and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, you can see the wall of rain moving in at the moment. It should slowly clear over the course of this evening. So around 8, 9 p.m. it should just be in the far southeast and around midnight tonight it should have completely cleared but still a few heavier showers pushing into the north and the west some of these could be really quite heavy torrential showers in there but they should move you quite quickly on a brisk westerly flow tomorrow we do see more uh, showers pushing in uh, and we could have seen some heavier precipitation in the far south through early hours of Sunday, but you can see again, it's just clipping the far south coast, so nothing too extreme there. So the weekend, we'll have plenty of showers, but won't be too widely um, widely wet. Um, and as we move beyond that into Monday, you can see another weather front pushes in. Not quite as organised, but still bringing some very heavy rain at times. And again, more heavy precipitation into the south and southeast as well there. Uh, we see a bit of a waving weather front there, moving in a frontal wave, potentially wriggling along that boundary. So we've got higher pressure trying to halt these lows from the south and the east, but we have lower pressure trying to push in from the north and the west. So yeah, it could be some very, very heavy rain early next week, perhaps in the south and east, but still things can change because these positions of these weather fronts are changing quite a lot as well, run to run. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with that. If you look at the max temperatures over the next five days, uh, again, you can see those temperatures today really quite miserable under that rain band, 11, 12, 13 degrees. Either side of the rain band, we see a bit of sunshine, maybe 16, 17 max temperatures. But whenever the rain does move through, it will be feeling a lot colder than that. As we head through to Saturday, the overnight temperatures not going to drop down too much, uh, maybe 9, 10 degrees. And tomorrow, temperatures maybe 18 19 degrees in the south and the east, but we avoid the showers further north and westwards, maybe 14 or 15, a little bit cooler to start the uh, October. As we head into Sunday, the overnight temperatures will drop down a little bit towards 8, 9 degrees perhaps, and into the afternoon, maybe 16, 17. So not too bad, more around average this time of year. Um, but again, it is not going to feel all too warm when we have the gustier winds and the heavier showers. And into Monday, you can see the temperature dropping maybe 4 or 5 degrees at times, but mostly 7, 8. And into the afternoon, maybe 18 degrees in a few spots. And that is similar into Tuesday, where we could see 16, 17 again. But it's wherever we got that heavier precipitation, it is going to feel colder. Um, and again, we can't really pinpoint that too much um, in this sort of time frame, as things are still continually uh, continuing to subtly shift um so yeah we'll just have to keep an eye on it uh keep you up to date on these videos every day so if we do go over to the gfs and see what that is showing you over the next couple of weeks um uh, this is the six o'clock run that has just come out and you can see the westerly flow at the moment we can stay in this westerly flow all the way to sort of sunday monday time we see little wiggles there and even though high pressure is building in we can still see some very heavy rain because of the frontal wave potentially developing on the boundary Beyond that, we do see a general westerly flow, a lot of low pressure systems getting picked up, perhaps even Wednesday next week, big heavy bouts of rain pushing through, and you can just say we see we stay on the dividing line between low pressure, high pressure, and that just means we're going to see repeated bouts of westerly winds and low pressure systems feeling pretty miserable, and any signs of real high pressure builds are very temporary, you can see there brief high pressure build there, maybe at day 8, day 9, before it gets flattened, and we see big westerly flows pushing in. So it is pretty autumnal conditions with big low pressure systems. That's a real severe low there. 955 millibars towards the centre of that low. Yes, it's positioned towards Iceland, but if that did subtly shift towards the UK, we see the jet stream just drop a tiny bit further southwards, then we would see a big, big name storm there. But it is, as I said, staying much to our north. So, again, we'll have to see what happens with the positioning of that. But at this stage, a continued, very unsettled, stormy, westerly flow looks likely over the next couple of weeks. Yes, high pressure signals have uh, have been there. They've been trying to build in at times uh, within the model output the last few days. But it doesn't look like it's coming off. It does look likely to remain what we are having at the moment, which is a flat westerly flow. But again, things can change and we'll just have to keep an eye on what happens over the next few days. 
If we go over to the GM, see how that does compare. Again, we've got the flat westerly at the moment, the low. We do see a brief build of pressure early next week before it gets flattened again by low pressure just sitting towards Iceland. And that just continues. And we see, see a little bit of a cutoff low there, potentially. Maybe breaking that westerly flow a little bit with the high pressure building up towards Iceland. But it still is very unsettled. So even though the output at day 10 is slightly different, so the outcome for the UK in terms of low pressure, windy, wet weather is pretty much the same. If you go over to the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, we see a westerly flow at the moment, high pressure trying to build in, and then just continues into those westerly bouts, uh, and high pressure trying to build in at day 10, but it does look very transient with low pressure, ready to push back in from southern Greenland um, <laughs> later uh, beyond that. So again, ECMWF continuing the trend of very unsettled westerly flow, Typical autumnal conditions, potentially very stormy weather here at times, but also could just be generally unsettled. Um, but any sign of any warmer, drier weather, any southerly flows, does not look particularly likely. And with that wind veering more of a west and northwesterly, it will mean times it will feel chilly out there wouldn't be surprised to see more overnight frosts um, here or there again won't be sustained because with the low pressure coming in off the atlantic we're going to see a lot of cloud precipitation showers which will mix up the air so it's unlikely to see any real sustained periods of frosts but we could see the odd overnight frost here or there we could see quite cold days with the rain and the wind and the cloud um and yeah any warm weather not looking good in the longer term so do now have a look at the ensembles to finish the video you can see generally we are around or below average in terms of upper air temperatures over the next couple of weeks except for this one bump coming in in a couple of days time as we see high pressure trying to build up from the south bringing us a waft of warmer air from the south and the west perhaps giving temperatures in around that 18 to 20 degree mark for quite a few areas in the south but it will only really be that warm if it coincides with some sunshine and daytime uh, but there are still plenty of areas of precipitation again the one thing we have emphasized in the last few videos it will be a north south split all the rain won't be exclusively in the north but most of it and the heaviest precipitation will be in the north we will still very still see very heavy bouts of rain in the south um a lot of showers as well but you can see here a lot of smaller spikes but quite frequent as well uh, and the longer term as said generally below average upper air temperatures um, as it does look likely to be sort of a west to northwesterly flow which is colder than average of course uh if we do look at the sea level pressure from the midnight run you can see generally we are around sort of mean sea level pressure uh the average sea level pressure um uh, sort of neutral territory around that 1015 1020 millibars for the foreseeable future because we are in the south on the cusp of lower pressure and on the cusp of higher pressure We're right on that boundary which means we could see drier warmer weather at times but also equally see some very unsettled cooler weather at times as well but we compare that to glasgow much further north as you can see much lower around that thousand to thousand ten millibars maybe rising to around a thousand twenty millibars right in the longer term um as uh, as we are generally a lot more unsettled up in glasgow and you look at the upper air temperatures and um, precipitation you see much higher precipitation values um and that is because those areas of precipitation and central flows are much closer to Glasgow. So the north very much seeing the most of the rain, but not exclusively. Uh, there will be some in the south as well. If we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, again, very similar around or below average over the next couple of weeks, except for that bump around the 4th, 5th, 6th of October, and plenty of precipitation around as well. Again, no massive precipitation spikes um, uh, because we are further southwards, so unlikely to see the heaviest precipitation. And if we do have a look uh, at Glasgow from this as well, you can see much more precipitation. Very, very unsettled, stormy, unsettled conditions in the north over the next couple of weeks. So yeah, not looking good if you are in the north and you want any dry or warm weather. It looks generally around average or below average in terms of surface temperatures and very high amounts of rainfall as well. Days like we're seeing today with heavy precipitation pushing in from the west look likely to continue over the next couple of weeks, uh, making things continue to be very unsettled and pretty miserable at times. But again, it is autumn. These things are expected. Just we have had four months of real warm, hot summer-like conditions. So it is coming as a bit of a shock. But this, unfortunately, is the sort of pattern as we run into the winter. We will, of course, see dry periods at times. We could see some warmer periods, some colder periods, but this sort of westerly flow, it's sort of the mean sort of conditions this time of year, unfortunately. 
Um, and that's why autumn's normally associated with stormy, windy weather. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. But at the moment, it looks typical autumnal conditions with some stormy weather um, coming in from the west with predominant amount of rain in the north, but not exclusively. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.